Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I feel weird saying that considering I haven't posted in I think over a year. Uh, so my sincerest apologies. I like got all on board with the whole YouTube thing. Um, and then I obviously fell off. Like I said I would, I knew this would happen, but I think I got four solid videos in before I quit, right? So it's better than nothing. I'm still like debating on getting like a nicer vlogging camera, um, you know, to make these videos more, just better, more visually appealing, you know, than just my iPhone and my ring light and my little microphone, which is so cute, right? Um, so anywho, I just thought this would be the perfect time. I had the itch to film a little vlog. Um, I don't even, technically, I don't even know if this is a vlog. I, I just had an itch to film a YouTube video and what better time than the day after Oceanside. Time for a race report, right? So uh, let's talk about it. Oceanside, first of all, look at this shirt. I don't even know. I can't see the screen, so I don't even know. If... This is why I need a vlogging camera because I don't know if you can see my whole shirt. It's the best race shirt I have ever gotten. The fit, immaculate. There's little palm trees on it. Amazing. I'm obsessed. And then also for the Iron Man Pro series, there was a different shirt, like a special shirt that says Iron Man Pro series on it. It's like red and black, same cut, obsessed. But when I saw, I was like, oh, I don't know if we're allowed to take, you know, that shirt and the race shirt. And then I saw the race shirt and I was like, I'm taking a race shirt. So anywho, and, and I'm kind of at that point too, where I have so many race shirts that I'm like, almost debate every race. I'm like, should I just not take one this time? or should I get rid of one? But anyway, I couldn't pass it up. That's besides the point. So Oceanside 70.3 was this past weekend. It was amazing. It's always amazing. I love that race so much. It's just, it's so nice for me because it's only, it's like an hour and a half drive from my apartment. It's so easy. Um, so I drove down on Friday morning, the day before the race. And I, for the Ironman Pro Series, they had this really cool thing where you could get like a free professional um, like headshot done, uh, in your kit. And so we like, I scheduled my slot for 11, 10 AM and we were all like hit the road and my ETA was 11.04. We got there at 11.04. I had just enough time to run into the hotel, change into my kit and then get my pictures taken. The pictures were so good. Um, it was a little humid though. It was raining that day, um, on Friday. And so my hair, it could have been better. So I'm like, I don't know at St. George if they're going to do that again, but I'm like, I want more pictures because they were so fun. Um, so anywho, did that. And then I headed over to race check-in to get my um, packet and everything. And that was smooth sailing. And then I hung out at the expo for a while. It was so fun. I feel like Oceanside's expo is always like huge. Like sometimes, you know, Ironman expos can be a bit sparse, which is surprising. But um, Zoo obviously was their hometown. This is like their hometown race. Um, and then I got to see Chirp which are those recovery wheels that I use that I absolutely love. So it was really fun to see them. I've never met them in person before. Um, athletic brewing, which is my favorite. It's like non-alcoholic beer, but it's so good. I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> I think I came home with like 10 beers because I just like, you know, would stop by, grab a beer, maybe grab two here and there. Got some after the race, um, which I'm very excited about. I got a bunch of different ones to try. Uh, and then I headed to the pro meeting, which was crazy because – um, there were a hundred, I don't know if everyone showed up, but there was, you know, signed up. There were 40 pro women and 80 pro men. So 120 pro. So absolutely no friends or family were allowed in this pro meeting. It was in this big room in the like city hall, Oceanside city hall. And it was like, like every seat was taken. It was so packed and it was just crazy. Cause you're in this room and like, who am I? Right. You know, bottom of the barrel, like pro. And then it's just like the people that you know, you like fangirl are in the room with you. Like Taylor Nib walks in and I'm like, I want to be so I like, I'm trying to be cool, but I love her so much. And like, I've never like actually talked to her before, but she had like a mask on. And I was like, well, I don't want to like go up to her and like get in her face and be like, let's get a picture. So I, I played it cool. You know, it was fine. Um, Tamara Jewett was there. Yeah, it was. Oh, Paula Finley. Yeah. Just a lot of opportunities to fangirl, but I was cool guys. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, the pro meeting was it was cool. They, um, nothing really felt different than a normal pro meeting. Um, it didn't seem like there were any, uh, different rules or anything. It seemed like they maybe were going to be a little bit more strict about, um, like penalties and drafting and stuff. And then there's the new rule about putting the water bottle down the front of your kit to make yourself more aerodynamic. So they talked about that for a little bit. 
And then we were supposed to get those like race, I forget what they're called, the radars that can detect how close the bike in front of you is. We were supposed to get those, um, like kind of like, I think this was like the debut of them and all the pros were supposed to get them, which I was kind of excited for because I never, I try my best not to draft, but sometimes it's hard to tell what six bike lengths is like when you're out there. Um, but then the guy who I guess is like the founder of the company or something, he came out and talked to us and he was like, yeah, they're not ready yet. There were still some bugs with the software. Um, my cats are like losing their mind right now. Anyway. Uh, so there were some bugs with the software and they weren't ready. So we unfortunately did not get to use the radars, um, for the race, but you know, I guess they're going to be debuted in Ironman Texas in a few weeks. So whatever. I mean, I was kind of like, I don't know how to like install it on my bike. I'm sure that they would have told me, but I was like, okay, one less thing to worry about, I guess. And then, yeah, uh, dropped my bike off at T or transition and then checked into the hotel, got dinner, race day. I slept great, by the way. I went to bed at like 8.30 and I fell right asleep, which is insane. Um, and I woke up once to pee which it just means I'm hydrated, you know, that's good. So <laughs> I slept great. Um, and then I woke up and just, I ate my, I eat overnight oats every day for breakfast. So I brought a jar of overnight oats from home and had that for breakfast, got ready and then headed out. And I thought I gave myself like plenty of time. I always get there super early, but there was the parking lot the pros can park in, which is so nice. Um, it's the same parking lot that shuttles drop the athletes off. And so it's like right there, but you still have like, maybe like a 10 minute walk from the parking lot to transition, but it also took forever to get into the parking lot. Like the traffic was so bad. And so I was like moderately stressing, but like, I was like, Oh, I still, it's like five 45. I still have like 45 minutes till transition closes. So parked, um, got to transition. And then I felt like something was like a little off with my, um, arrow bottle. Like I couldn't get it in all the way. So I was like kind of playing with that. And then the announcer kept being like, okay, guys, transition is closing. If you're a pro athlete, please report to the water immediately. And I hadn't even set up transition yet. I'm still trying to figure out this bottle. And Brittany Vaki was next to me and she's like, it looks fine. And she like shook my bottle and she's like, it seems pretty secure. I think you're okay. Like, you know, whatever. And I was like, I think you're right. So it was fine. It was fine. Um, and then I set up the rest of the transition and then got in the water. The water was, I think it was 59 degrees, which is cold, but it's not as cold as Indian Wells. So I don't know. It like, when you're swimming in a race like this, I feel like I'm not even thinking about the cold. Like there's the initial shock when you get in pros, get in pros actually start in the water, which is nice. Cause you can kind of get in and get used to it. So I can see like, if you're running in that initial shock is a lot, especially I get like brain freeze almost, but once that passes, I felt pretty good. Um, got in with like, I think Taylor Nib and Paula Finley were like, you know, way ahead of everyone. But then I was in like the chase pack. There's a big group of us together. Um, which was cool. I was like with, uh, I don't even know who I was with, but I do know I was with my friend Elizabeth Heinbach because every time I'd breathe to my right, she was breathing to her left and we were looking at each other. And I was like, there's something weirdly comforting about being in this water right next to somebody, you know. Um, but this year, the swim, instead of starting in the ocean and swimming into the harbor, it was all in the harbor because the waves were huge. And I was like, so thankful. I know people are like, oh, you're a strong swimmer. You should like want to swim in the ocean. You know, you have the advantage. I don't like big waves. I think they're really scary. I hate trying to get out through the break and it just stresses me out. So there was a high surf warning. So they moved the swim into the harbor, um, which is fine. They did that last year too, because the water was really cold in the ocean. Um, but <laughs> we were coming back on the swim, like the sun was rising. It was so hard to see the buoys. And like, every time I'd look up to breathe, I would look at the other pro women and like, they were all also kind of looking up. Like, I feel like we were all kind of looking around, like where the hell is this buoy? Um, but I think it was fine. I did hear that we might have like missed a buoy, but I looked at my Strava and it looked pretty good. I can kind of see where there might have been like a turn that we were supposed to like, not a turn, but like it looked curvier on Strava and it, it should have been more like angular. So I think there was a buoy that we missed, but my swim time was like a little, it was actually a little slower than normal. So I don't know. Um, so anyway, yeah, then I got on the bike and bike started out good. <laughs> this course you know, it starts out flat and almost, you, I, I think we might have even had a tailwind. I was like, this is great. We're going to have a good day. Um, this happens every year. I've done this race four times. There was one year where this ended up being my bike PR, um, for like a while, which is weird. Cause there's like 3000 feet of climbing in this bike course. But I think the year I PR, I think that there was a, it was a tailwind year. Like this year there was a headwind in every direction, but that year there was a tailwind in every direction. But yeah, no, the first like five miles, we did have a bit of a um, tailwind. And then I don't even remember. Oh, huh. okay. So 
maybe mile like five, like just getting into it, there was a really confusing turn. Okay. And this might be, I mean, this is all totally my fault. It was just really dumb. So basically there was a left turn and there was a volunteer cones on the outside of the turn telling you that you're turning left. Volunteer is pointing that you're turning left, but there were two options to turn left. There's kind of a fork in the road. So if you stayed more to the right, that was where you were supposed to go, but you're going onto the wrong side of like a highway. And then the other turn kind of like went down into this like other road and there was like a fence and the fence was like open. And I kind of like, I've done this course before, right? But like, I don't have it memorized. And like, <laughs> I was turning the right direction. I just chose the wrong road because there are parts in this course where you do go through like kind of weird openings and fences and like end up on bike paths. And I thought this was one of those sections. And like the volunteer, I, I have my arrow helmet on, I couldn't hear anything, but I could hear, he was like yelling something and I thought he was just directing, you know, like left turn, whatever. And Elizabeth, my friend was behind me and she followed me down the road. And then uh, the road was really bad, really like small, small road, like not well kept, just like gravel everywhere. And I was like, this feels wrong. And thank God it kind of dead ended probably like 0.2 miles in at like a water treatment plant smelled terrible, but <laughs> I was like, okay, if this road hadn't dead ended, I don't know how long I would have gone, but I was like, oh my God. So we like you turn and I apologize to Elizabeth. I'm like, I am so sorry. Turn around, got back on course. The volunteers like, I tried to tell you, you made a wrong turn. And I was like, well, you maybe should have tried harder. I'm just kidding. It's not the volunteers fault at all. It was just completely like me being stupid. And it turned out that I heard um, some of the lead pro women. I don't know. I heard Emma Pallant Brown. I don't know if it was just her or multiple people um, also took a wrong turn on the bike course. And I also heard um, people talking about a chain link fence. So I was like, could possibly be the same spot. Um, and I was like, I don't know why they didn't just put like four cones to block that section. Maybe they did after I took the wrong turn um, or just like parked a car there. Like no one was driving down that road to, on, you know, on a Saturday. I digress. It added like two minutes to my bike time. And in hindsight, if that two minutes had made the difference in like an overall course PR, like if I missed PRing by like a minute because of that, I would have been so mad. But my overall time was so slow for me that I didn't even care. It was like water under the bridge, you know what I mean? So <laughs> keep going. Like I didn't get too discouraged. It was really only like two minutes. Got back on course. Um, but everything was fine after that, you know, you get into the Camp Pendleton and it's just a lot of climbing. It's so much climbing. There's huge hills. It's just, it's like very demoralizing and I like climbing, but there is something about this course. It just seems like you think the hills are done and they're never done. Plus the wind, the wind was gnarly. Um, I was getting crosswinds, headwinds. The road was really bad. I don't know. I don't remember it being that bad before. I think usually they, um, paint like bright orange um, around potholes so you can tell where they are. But this time I think that it rained the day before. So maybe they didn't have the opportunity to do that. I don't know, but it just felt like I'd be riding along. And then I'd like, come up on like a one foot deep pothole, like in my, you know, down in my arrow bars. And then, you know, you're swerving out of the way to avoid it. And so that was kind of scary. I was like really bumpy. Um, I lost my bottle and my flat repair kit, which were both in the back bottle cage. Um, so that kind of, stinks, but I don't think that I will be needing, um, a spare tube and CO2, um, for reasons I can't really say something's coming. You might see it on Instagram before I post this YouTube video. There may or not, may not be a new bike. I may or not, may not be tubeless soon. It's fine. But anyway, I lost the flat repair kit with only like five miles to go. So I was like, I better not flat. Like that would be terrible. I didn't even know I lost it. You know, I just like, felt or like I saw my shadow, I think, and saw there was nothing in my bottle cages. So anyway, but I was about 45 miles into the bike. I was so over it. I was going so slow. And last year, the same thing happened. I had a terrible bike course. And I remember looking at my watch last, excuse me, last year. And I was so mad that I wasn't going to PR. I was pissed. And so I like really got down on myself. I mean, I still had a really good run. Everything last year was good. I just was like, I was pissed. So this year I did not look at my watch at all. Uh, I was like, you know what? I know that I'm going slow. <laughs> and I was like, I don't need to know. But I was like, this is kind of ridiculous though, how slow I am going. Um, and I was like, I'm quitting triathlon forever. Uh, I, I'll just skip St. George. You know, I've already got the hotel, but I'll go to cheer. I was just being really dramatic. Um, but then, <laughs> and my, um, my bike time ended up being like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that, slower than my bike PR. So yeah, 
that wasn't good. Um, but I talked to other people after the race and everyone had the same experience. Everyone's times were like 20 minutes slower. Paula Finley's was like 20 minutes slower. So I felt better. And then I decided not to quit triathlon when I heard that. So that was good. Um, so anyway, I came into transition. I was so ready to get off that bike, which is very unlike me, but I got off that bike. I was like, I don't want to see this thing ever again, throw it in the trash. Um, then I go out for the run and my fiance, he was standing, um, the pros where their spot was in transition. It was like a really good place for spectators. Cause you could just like walk up to the fence. <laughs> and so he was right there when I came in off the bike and I was like, I took a wrong turn. I'm so mad at myself. And he's like, yeah, one of the lead pro women also took a wrong turn. And I was like, okay, I feel a little less stupid now. Um, <laughs> all right. But seeing him also kind of like brought my spirits up. And then I put my run stuff on and I went and I ran and I felt really good. I maybe, I don't know. I don't think I took it out too fast. I tried to keep it pretty steady on the second loop. I kind of felt like my calves were going to cramp, but never did. Cause I take those salt pills. Amazing. Um, but you know, there's these couple sections where you have to run up this really steep ramp up to the piers. It's so steep, but it's short. So the second loop, I just kind of walked on those and would like stretch my calves. Cause I was like, if I do try to run this section, I will cramp. Um, so bad, but then, yeah, I think, I don't know. I kind of just held a steady pace. Um, the crowd support, absolutely amazing. It's so fun when I pass other triathletes and they're like, go LA triathlete, go Carolyn. And like people in the crowd, like nothing gets me more hype. And this run course is so good for that because pretty much the whole thing, they're just lined with people. There's like one section at the far turnaround, um, where there's not as much crowd support, but there's like aid stations still. And like the whole time you're running, it's an out and back, right? Out and back twice. And so you're seeing everyone else, all the other runners on the other side. So you're never alone. There's just always tons of people everywhere. And it's just so much fun. Um, so it's just like hard not to smile and have a good time. And yeah, I still, like I said, I still didn't even look at my watch. I think I looked down a couple of times to make sure, you know, I was running too fast. There were a couple of times where I was like, I don't know. I felt like it was like a little too fast. I was like pushing a little too hard, but I looked down and I was going pretty fast, so I'd kind of slow it down a little bit um, so I wouldn't, like, die at the end. But I think that my pacing on the run was really good. Uh, I don't think I could have ran much faster, which is always a good feeling. Sometimes it's, like, I kind of feel like I'm a little more conservative on the run, but then I'm, like, I could have ran faster. But this time, I was pretty – I was pretty spent from that bike course, too. So, <laughs> But the one thing I guess I did on the bike that was good was that um, I fueled really well despite – my bike time being so slow, I feel like I drank and ate enough carbs and sodium and that like helped me, um, really well through the run. So that was really good. Um, but yeah, I crossed the finish line. My time was like a five, five fifteen, five hours and 15 minutes, which it's fine. I mean, that's like a little slower than I went last year. Um, I was hoping to PR the overall 70.3 because again, one year I had it one year, I had a good bike there. But I'm starting to realize this is not a PR course. No one PR'd. But I was really proud of my performance. And this time, it wasn't even about time for me. Um, you know, I just, my main goal, I was like, maybe for this race, I'm going to try to, like, not come in last for the pros, which I did not, which was exciting. And I was pretty close to the people that were in front of me. Like, I felt like I was right there. Um, I think the girl who came in the place before me was, like, one minute faster. And then the girl before her was only one minute faster than her. So it was just, like, boom, boom, boom again, it made me feel so much better about myself. Um, because I just feel like sometimes I finish like, I think maybe last year, I don't know. One of the, some of the times I just finished like 30 minutes behind everyone else. I'm like, Oh my God. But again, I felt really good about that. So I'm kind of excited. I, um, I'm doing St. George in less than four weeks now, which it's a quick turnaround. Um, and like I said, I might have a new bike. We'll see. We'll see. I've heard that's also a very hilly bike course. Not surprised because it is Utah. Um, but I, it's, everyone says it's so beautiful and so rewarding. And like I said, I do like climbing if I have a good attitude. So hopefully I have a better attitude on the bike in St. George. I don't think that it's going to, it doesn't sound like it's a PR course. It sounds like the run's pretty hilly too, but, um, you know, I'd like to not get last place again. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, Oceanside, I love it. Every year, I'm just, you know, I tell myself, I'm not doing that again. Like last year, the bike was bad. One year, the run was bad for me. And I was like, this is stupid. I'm never doing this course again. That's not true. It is so fun. It's not stupid. 
It's my favorite race. I will do it literally every year. Um, highly recommend. If you guys haven't done it, highly recommend. It's iconic. And yeah, um, I can't think of anything else. My friend Jenna won overall for women, like overall um, for age group. And I like that's her time was so good. Like she that was really cool to see. I was really excited for her because she had a really bad year last year racing. And so she posted about like before the race, how nervous and anxious she was. And then for her to win, I was like, that is incredible. So I'm really excited for her. And there were a lot of people I met at the race when they finished who said it was their first half Ironman. Um, so yeah, like that's that kind of stuff is so fun and so inspiring and why I keep doing it. Even when I say that I'm going to quit at mile 45. Um, but yeah, so like I said, St. George in like four weeks, um, I'm doing the San Diego international at the end of June, the probably the long beach legacy Olympic in the middle of July and my weddings in September. So probably nothing before then, maybe like a bike race. Um, and then after the wedding, I might do a marathon maybe in October if I'm feeling like spicy. Cause I'm like, I'm going to want something to train for, but like my honeymoon's in November. I don't know. This year's kind of weird, but yeah, the honeymoon is two weeks in November, but I still kind of want to do Indian Wells at the beginning of December. So like, I don't know. We'll see. That one's fun. Um, I think if I train, you know, up to it and then run a little when I'm on my honeymoon, like I should be fine. So maybe I'll see you there. Um, and yeah, I'm going to try to, I don't want to promise that I'm going to upload more consistently, but I'm going to try my best. So bear with me. Um, and yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. And I, I will try to post more videos. <laughs>